All right, guys, so here's a yet another video covering the uh, Armor Creighton 8S um, in comparison to the Traxxas XRT. So you get kind of a little bit of a close up on that. And you can see, obviously, those are aftermarket wheels and tires and the XRT. All right, so first thing we're going to look at, as you can see in size there, the XRT is a little bit smaller. It's not a lot, but it is, um, you know, the, the appearance that it has is that it's slightly smaller. Um, they do build the Traxxas as a uh, one six scale and the Creighton as a one fifth scale. Um, so like I said, just be aware that there's a slight difference in size. Um, one of the big differences is in weight. The Creighton weighs um, considerably more. Um, this one, I believe, is right about 25 pounds without batteries. And this one is right about 21 pounds. And, you know, so 20 to 25% more. It's a, it's a pretty big difference. Um, so the next thing I want to look at here is the way the body mounts. So the Creighton, of course, uses the older style uh, body clips. One of the nice things, of course, is they do give you these reinforcements. Um, so you're not just putting a clip in right there where it's going to pull through the body really easily. Um, you know, and it makes it pretty easy to take off, I guess. Um, those body clips can be kind of difficult sometimes to get off just because they're really tight. Um, you know, and then we're going to come over here and look at the, the Traxxas. And, of course, the Traxxas has the um, clips that are underneath. And let me see if I can get these so you pretty much reach under here and I'll show you guys what it looks like in case you're not familiar with these. Uh, I know they've been out for a little while. Um, it's the first one of these I've owned, so it was still kind of new to me. And you can see there's a lot of a lot of plastic for the clipless um, or the, you know, I guess the clip on body style. And that's actually where it mounts right there all right so i'm going to set the bodies off to the side and then we'll continue on with the uh comparison and just a quick shot of this i thought it was interesting um with the bodies off you can see the xrt body is in fact a little bit bigger than the creighton 8s body all right so here's the creighton with the uh the body off and you can see you know there's the uh the power leads right here and of course you've got some bracing um, you know, it's fairly conventional layout. And then we're going to move over here to the XRT and you can see it's, uh, definitely looks a lot different. So, you know, the, the first impression for me when I see both of these is that the, the Traxxas just looks a little bit more toy-like and the Creighton looks more like a actual, uh, you know, like a hobbyist machine, um, aside from the sheer size of it, just, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of metal and aluminum, um, you know, or steel and aluminum, um, you know, you have the chassis braces and just the, the overall look to me, I think it looks a little bit nicer than, you know, all the plastic on the, on the XRT. So taking a look at, um, you know, again, the, the chassis on this, and I guess I can lift this up a little bit just so you guys can kind of see underneath. So this is a, you know, an aluminum chassis. Uh, you can see right there, 7075 aluminum. And if we come over here, you can see that the uh, the Traxxas is, you know, plastic chassis. But, you know, it's, it's pretty smooth underneath there, um, which is kind of nice. So my view on the plastic versus al aluminum. Years ago, I had a Hot Bodies VE8 uh, 8 scale buggy. And that was a plastic chassis also. And I got to say, after owning that, um, I'm actually a big fan of the plastic chassis. That thing was very solid, never had any issues. Um, and that it was really durable. It took some massive hits and just never had an issue. So obviously, I'm not saying the XRT is necessarily going to be the same. But, um, you know, if you've had one of these and you kind of feel around like with the the plastic shock towers and everything it just it's well engineered and that's something that i actually really like about the traxxas um it seems to me that they maybe took a little bit more time 
in in developing the chassis um you know it's just my opinion i know not everybody's going to agree with that but i will say um you know i i don't have any concerns about the durability of the plastic chassis and as far as the ease of working on the two i, I guess that's uh you know everybody has i guess a different way of looking at things and the way that the engineers created the Creighton as opposed to the way that Traxxas engineers created this. I think it goes more in line in, you know, what type of, uh, you know, who you fall more in line with. Some people may find, as I do, that the, the Traxxas, the way it's put together actually makes uh, more sense to me and it's not difficult to work on as opposed to the Creighton, which is fairly conventional, but I just find it a little bit more difficult to work on. I know that runs contrary to a lot of people, but like I said, it could just be, you know, that my way of thinking maybe lines up more with the, the people who created this. All right, so now we're going to just take a quick look at the battery trays, and you can see fairly conventional here on the Creighton. Now, I do want to point out one nice thing is that this actually has on these straps, if you look here at the back, and it's much smaller, and that's actually for your balance leads. So when you strap the battery down, you can tuck the balance leads back here, and that way those aren't flapping around and, you know, um, less potential of them getting torn off if they're just flapping around in a random area. Another nice thing is the adjustable battery tray. Um, you know, you can extend it out, and that prevents having to use, uh, you know, like foam spacers. You can actually custom fit the tray, um, which is definitely a nice touch. Um you know, I had a HPI Vorza years ago, and that was one of the first vehicles I had with the adjustable battery tray, and I thought that was just great. Having said that, I don't like this design here because when you're undoing the Velcro straps to put your battery in, and then you're looping it over, and now you have the side guard in the way, and um, to me, that that's just not the greatest design. Uh, again, you know, just my opinion and uh, my experience in putting batteries in. I, I wish they had done this a little bit differently. Um, there's probably a few things they could have done. And I'm sure there's, you know, aftermarket solutions to that. But from the factory, the Velcro is good. It's just I'm not crazy about having that side guard right there. Coming over to the XRT, you guys can see, of course, I've replaced the stock battery door with Velcro. Um, one thing that I didn't like about the XRT and the, uh, the way the battery set up is, is it has that door that basically locks into place. Um, but it kind of limits you to the height of the battery. So, um, you know, I just wanted to go with Velcro. It just seemed to be better for me. Um, having said that, the downside of course is, you know, because it's a plastic chassis and the, the tray is part of it it's not adjustable. So if you're going to run a smaller battery, you're pretty much going to have to put a foam spacer in so the battery's not sliding around, you know, or put some Velcro on the bottom. Um, but overall, you know, I, I would say probably on the battery trays, I would say that they're pretty equal. This doesn't have any nice sections where you can, uh, you know, anything to hold down, even with the stock, um, the stock battery doors. It doesn't have anything to hold the balance leads so yeah you know, that's, that's kind of a negative of course if you're using a traxxas battery um their battery leads are you know pretty much there's there's no external balance lead so i guess you don't have to worry about that uh next thing next thing of course is the uh you know esc of course this is aftermarket um, but esc and motor um, again, you know, it's fairly conventional, um, one on each side and, you know, mounted up towards the front. Of course, your batteries are further back and that way the weight distribution hopefully evens out. Um, so again, you know, no, no real big surprises on any of that. Coming over to the Traxxas, you can see it's, it's definitely a little bit different um, as far as the overall layout. Everything's, you know, down the center, um, you know, probably a little bit better for weight distribution. One thing that I do want to bring up that I haven't really um, heard too many people talk about is the motor and the motor cooling fans. When I first saw that, I just thought it was great because it looks like a little miniature V8 engine. You know, you have these, these fans set off and they're basically like 
big valve covers. Um, you know, that was just the overall impression that I got when looking at it was, you know, they, they did a nice job in making that look really nice. It, at least to, to my eyes, it looks really nice. Um, you know, of course, they call that the Valinian. So, you know, and it's an eight cell. So it's, yeah, it's pretty much like a little mini V8 there. Coming up to the steering servo, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hidden down in there pretty good. Um, so I can't really get a too good of a shot of it. Um, but the steering servo is actually underneath the, the ESC. Um, and they do give you two different um, radio trays, which is kind of nice because this whole tray comes out with like four screws. That way, if you're really going to clean up your RC, you're not getting the electronics wet, even though, uh, you know, they are waterproof or at least water resistant. That's kind of a nice feature to have. You know, again, nothing, uh, nothing all that different. Um, fa fairly conventional in the way that that's laid out. They give you a battery tray or a radio tray that'll hold a one-sixth scale servo and also a one-fifth scale. This one is the one-fifth. And, you know, it's it's just nice to have that choice. Um, coming over here, you can't really see down in there too much, but the, uh, the Traxxas, the steering servo is actually down here um, it's underneath. So, again, you really can't see it. The downside is... They use a proprietary um, servo mount. Now, there are companies that make aftermarket servo mounts, so you can use a conventional servo, but then you're using a conventional servo for an eighth scale as opposed to a slightly larger vehicle. Now, Traxxas does make three different servos. Um, I have the not the stock one, but the one upgraded, but not their top of the line. So this is, I think it's the 2085 is the regular servo. And they make a 25, 2085X and then the 2085R. So I have the X in this. So it is a little bit of an upgrade, but it would have been nice if they just would have used a conventional servo mount from the beginning. You know, so I do want to mention on the, the steering. So this uses what's called pillow ball. Um, some people also refer to it as pivot ball. Um, but I think it's more common to call them pillow ball, um, at least in, you know, in the United States it is. And I, I've read, you know, varying things on both is that the pillow ball um, is a little bit stronger. I know people have had issues with these tearing out on occasion, um, you know, on the other side. And I don't know if I can get to that. So hopefully you guys can see that right here, um, you know, right in there. So that's basically the cap. And what that does is that snugs this whole steering knuckle, um, you know, so it's basically kind of, if you were to loosen it, there'd be a lot of slop in that. Um, of course, too tight, and then it's going to be binding up. Um, you know, the Traxxas uses a little bit more conventional, um, I guess a C-hub is what these are referred to as. I've heard these give um, quicker steering, but they're supposedly not as durable. I've had both kinds on a variety of vehicles. Um, the Traxxas Revo uses the pillow ball. Um, I believe the Mugen that I had years ago also used that. But the V8 used more, a more similar style to this as well as a variety of other vehicles. Um, I don't really have much of a preference on that. You know, I'm sure when people are maybe a little bit um, better at driving, more advanced, um, they can probably tell a big difference. But I think for most people, it's, you know, it's really not going to make too much of a difference. I, I think they're both uh, pretty equal. Coming up to the front, this is the, um, this was the roller version. Um, and I guess they stopped making that. But one nice thing about the roller version, one, it's the EXB. So it comes with the upgraded, you know, heavier duty parts as far as shock shafts and the, the better chassis than just the regular um, RTR. Now, at this point, they're pretty much only making the ready-to-run or the RTR EXB. Um, so that does come with the, the better chassis, the 70, 75, and the heavier-duty shock shafts and, um, you know, just small upgrades here and there that all add up. But one nice thing is it does have sway bars. 
Um, you know, I know not everybody's going to use those depending on the terrain, but it's definitely nice to have. Where coming over here to the Traxxas, I don't, um, I haven't really looked into it to see if they make sway bars, but if they do, you know, it's certainly not added, um, or it doesn't come with it, so that's going to be an add-on, so a little bit additional um, cost on that. One other nice thing, of course, is you can set um, your camber um, here, because that's all adjustable, and you can see right down here, and I guess I can just grab that from the back, so you can see you have the adjustable um, rods here for your um, toe in and toe out and you know adjustable here for your your camber um, you know so that's j just kind of nice to have as opposed to the Traxxas which you know is pretty much all plastic everywhere um, pretty much no adjustability which for anybody who's um, you know even slightly more advanced it's probably nice to have that adjustability. Now the, the flip side of that is, you know, it's it's less things for you to have to worry about going out of adjustment because it's pretty much preset. Um, so it's, it's always gonna be the same. Um, probably even after you crash, it's not really gonna change where, you know, something like this, where, you know, a good enough crash, you're probably gonna have to do some adjustments because things can get a little bit out of whack. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll kind of call that a draw unless you're a little bit more experienced and you're actually doing some track running. Then the advantage is definitely going to come over here to the Creighton. If you're not really, uh, you know, wanting to do any adjustments and just kind of, uh, you know, doing a little more bashing, then the, the edge probably goes over here to the XRT. Um, one thing of note is, of course, Traxxas does sell aftermarket parts and there's other companies offering aftermarket stuff. So you can have that adjustability up here. Um, you know, so then that would kind of give the advantage, I think, to the, the Traxxas just because you have the ability to add in those adjustments where even though the Creighton already has it, you don't have the ability to not have that and not have to worry about that. Um, you know, and as, as an overall, uh, my pick is is the Traxxas. It's the XRT. Uh, like I said, it just um, just the overall layout makes more sense to me. Um, you know, I find it easier to work on, and it being slightly smaller and definitely lighter um, for me, it's it's a lot easier to work on when it's on my kitchen table. You know, trying to flip these things upside down and. You know, um, the, the Creighton's got some some weight to it, and it's, you know, a little bit bigger, and just that extra size and the extra weight of it makes it a little bit more difficult to work on. Overall, I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. Um, they're both great RC cars, and, uh, you know, they're obviously two of the most popular, at least in this segment. Um, you know, they're both more, um, a little bit, better handling i guess than you know maybe like the x max um or the outcast which i know is really popular people for doing stunts a little bit shorter wheelbase but yeah so there's a you know comparison of, of both of the rcs and um you know just my overall impression and uh you know my thoughts on them so hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh you know feel free to leave any comments or questions and uh you know i'll do my best to answer them and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.